TrueNAS Core is a powerful and flexible network attached storage software that shares and protects data from modern day threats like ransomware and malware. TrueNAS makes it easy for users and devices to access and share data through virtually any protocol. In this video, we're going to walk you through installing TrueNAS Core start to finish. Ready? Let's get to it. Before we get started, let's talk about what you need in terms of hardware to get TrueNAS Core up and running and what its minimum requirements are. Starting off with the CPU, TrueNAS Core requires a 64-bit CPU. Along with that, we recommend choosing a processor that can support ECC memory for the best data integrity. Speaking of memory, TrueNAS Core requires a minimum of 8GB of RAM to start, with more RAM being useful depending on what sort of workloads, features, and functionality you intend to enable in the software. As we previously mentioned in the CPU requirements, for the best reliability and integrity of your data, we highly recommend using ECC or error checking and correcting RAM. If you're building a system to run TrueNAS Core, make sure your CPU and motherboard will support ECC memory. Now let's talk about storage. The installation of TrueNAS Core needs to live on a hard disk or an SSD with a minimum of 8GB of storage. This drive will be separate from the disks used as part of your storage pool. We do not recommend installing TrueNAS on a USB stick for reliability reasons. For your storage pool, TrueNAS requires a minimum of a single disk, but using multiple disks will provide you with more redundancy and performance. Just make sure they're all the same physical size. You can practically use any type of disk storage media available today. However, we recommend you consider using disks that are rated to be used in a NAS. We use and recommend Western Digital Red NAS Plus drives in all of our systems because they're designed to work best in that application. Either way, when choosing drives, select drives that use CMR or conventional magnetic recording technology. When in doubt, check your hard disk manufacturer's documentation to find out what type of writing technology your disk uses. Lastly, to connect your TrueNAS system to your network, you'll need to make sure your system has a wired Ethernet connection as TrueNAS Core doesn't support Wi-Fi adapters. Okay, with all of that out of the way, let's get a copy of TrueNAS Core downloaded. Head over to TrueNAS.com and download the TrueNAS Core ISO. This is the installation media you'll need to install TrueNAS Core. Once you've downloaded the ISO, you can either burn it to a CD or you can write the ISO to a USB stick. If you're unfamiliar with how to create a USB stick from an ISO, check the description below for a link to another video walking you through the process. All right, let's get the install started. We'll be installing off a USB stick, so once we plug it in, we'll power on the system and boot from the USB stick. This is the TrueNAS installer bootloader. Go ahead and hit enter to load the installation program or wait 10 seconds for the autoload process to automatically move forward. It takes just a few minutes for the install program to start up, so be patient. Welcome to the TrueNAS console setup application. From this menu, you can start the installation, drop to a shell, and reboot or shut down the system. We're here to install, so press enter to continue. Our next step is to select our target disk for the installation of TrueNAS. You can see we have three disks on our host, two 4 terabyte mechanical disks and one 250 gigabyte SSD. You may have more or less disks depending on what hardware you have installed on your system. TrueNAS Core requires a dedicated disk to install on, so we'll be using the 250GB SSD here. So we'll navigate down to that disk and select it using the spacebar. Once you've selected your target disk for installation, press enter to continue. The process of installation will destroy any data you have on the chosen target disk. Once you're ready to continue, hit enter. We need to set a password for our installation. This will be the password for the highest privilege user on the system, root. You're not required to set a password, but we highly recommend you set one for security. Enter your password twice and press enter to continue. TrueNAS can be configured to boot using either modern UEFI mode or legacy BIOS mode. The choice here is up to you and it will depend largely on what hardware you're installing TrueNAS on. Refer to your BIOS setup to see how it's configured. We'll be using the legacy BIOS boot mode for our install here. Choose your boot mode of choice and press enter to continue. Next, you'll be asked if you'd like to create a swap partition on your device. A swap partition is used by TrueNAS as part of memory management, but is not required. Depending on the size of your target installation disk, you may not have enough storage space to accommodate a swap partition. If your installation disk is large enough, go ahead and create one. We'll be creating a swap partition on our install. Select your choice and press enter to continue. Right now, TrueNAS is being installed on your host. This process will take a bit of time, so let it run till it's complete. Congratulations, you have installed TrueNAS Core. The last step to do before our first boot is to pull the memory stick or burn CD out of the system and reboot the host. Press enter to continue and navigate down to reboot and press enter to reboot your system. Remember to remove your installation media before your system boots up. Once your system comes up, you'll be greeted by the TrueNAS bootloader. This screen looks very familiar to the initial screen we saw for the installer. You can press enter to start the boot process or wait five seconds for the auto boot process to complete. 
Your initial boot into TrueNAS will take a bit as the system needs to complete some one-time post-install processes. These tasks only happen the first time after a fresh install, and future boots will be much quicker. Be patient as the process completes. Welcome to the TrueNAS console setup. This menu provides you options to make network configuration changes, reset your root password, access the shell, and shut down or reboot your host. The console setup also provides you the current IP address assigned to your host, which we'll need to log into the web interface. Make note of the IP address listed below. If you do not see a valid IP address and instead see 0.0.0.0, .0, check the physical network connection on your TrueNAS host, or check to see if DHCP isn't functioning on your home network. Keep in mind, you do not need to have a monitor connected to your new TrueNAS host after the initial install. All of the management for TrueNAS is done via the web UI. Let's log into that now. Open your preferred web browser of choice. We'll be using Chrome here, but practically any modern web browser will work with the TrueNAS web interface. Head over to your address bar of your browser and enter the IP address you saw from the console setup previously. This is the logon screen for TrueNAS Core. The default admin user is root, and the password is the password we set for the root user during the initial installation. Enter them both and click Login. Once we're logged in, we'll be greeted with the TrueNAS web UI, the welcome screen, and the dashboard. This is a great time to mention that we have a ton of documentation and resources to help you get the most out of your TrueNAS setup. And our fantastic community is full of great people who are willing to help answer any questions you might have. We highly recommend you check out those sites, bookmark them, and join the community. Let's take a quick walk around the web UI to get you familiar. Starting with the dashboard itself. The dashboard provides you an at-a-glance view of your TrueNAS system, including your CPU details, usage and thermals, and your network connection information and throughput. Once you set up a storage pool on your system, you'll see a widget for that as well. On the left side of the UI is where you'll find the different configuration sections for TrueNAS, each broken down depending on function. Take some time to look around and check out our documentation and the other videos on our channel for more in-depth information into these settings and the best practices for configuring TrueNAS. Thank you for watching.